Hi everyone, I'm Aristide from Metabolism of Cities and in this video I would like to share with you what is our, what are our plans for 2021 for the Metabolism of Cities Data Hub. So in another video I have explained what the Data Hub is and how you can use it um, and based on the feedback we have had from people but also our own use of the Data Hub there is a number of elements that we would like to improve and add uh, in 2021. So perhaps let me just give you a, um, some contextual information. Um, we are using the Metabolism of Cities Data Hub as a place, a central place, to collect information on urban resource flows and urban pollution flows. Um, we have been doing this type of uh, data dashboards and data repositories for a number of years and uh, we have been perfecting them as we go um, and of course you know there is some li limiting factors such as our own uh, time and our own uh, capacity because we, we just don't have su sufficient time to to go ahead I also want to mention that this is an open source and, and free um, uh, data repository and data hub so we're doing this as much as we can on our, on our spare time uh, and if it can fit with uh, you know some paid projects that's even better but in any case um, we we are building this and many different updates are coming year after year so we are extremely happy that now we have a forum and we can directly, people can directly contribute as soon as they have a profile before we had to acti activate them in the back. Um, and now we can make some very nice visualizations as well in terms of maps, in terms of data sets. So this is really exciting. However, there is some elements that are still missing and we're trying to figure out how to make them appear and in what order of priority. So for instance, um, if you have ever done a material flow analysis or if you have ever looked at the study of a material flow analysis, very frequently the steps are you collect the data, then you um, analyze the data and then you start to... Uh, how you call it, well, to, to, to visualize somehow the data. And one of the central, of course, visualization technique to visualize a material flow analysis is a Sankey diagram. So, so far, we have been most of the time collecting the data and then outsourcing the, the information for, well, the, the process of uh, visualizing a, a Sankey diagram. So you have many free tools that can do that, uh, and we have been using many of them. However, we would like to see how is it possible to streamline this in our, uh, in our process. So how can we, within the Data Hub, be able to uh, collect the data and then be able to structure it in a way that uh, semi-automatically or automatically does a Sankey diagram? Um, so that is something that we really want to, to work on for, for 2021. Uh, there are some other things that seem to be like very important. Um, um, for instance, in the, in the data collection, uh, perhaps in the future we would like to add like a private uh, component so people can also upload confidential data because so far this whatever you add in the platform is open to anyone and you can only upload to the that to to the platform uh, non-copyrighted data sets you can always make the link to where you can get a copyrighted data set but not included if that's available um, there is also um, some other elements such as um, how can we downscale information from higher up scales so a country scale or a regional scale or something like that so we know very pertinently that a lot of information exists at higher up scales so if you take the the, the country scale there is plenty of information there but at the city scale many times this is missing and at the country scale you have the irp data set so the international Res resource panel uh, data set which is a material flow analysis for all of the countries in the world that go back to I think to the 1970s and so we already have like a very promising data set that we would like to ingest and 
perhaps pre-fill some of the dashboards. So it means that we know already that you know if you start your your city sometimes it's a bit daunting to start this uh, data collection task because you you're facing with an empty dashboard and you need to start from the from scratch and you don't know where to start uh, to start from and you can't even imagine you know what the end result is so we're thinking that perhaps if we manage to ingest some of you know a country level information and we find a way to downscale it so probably it will be either by GDP per economic sector or number of employees or you know population, whatever. We know that the data, of course, is not going to be the most accurate possible. We know that the data is what it is, but at least it's a first step. And then you can always find more accurate data and change it if, if need be or uh, add on top or complement it um, so you can start with something. That also would help us to you know, make sure that this whole streamlining process from data collection to processing to Sankey diagram works because we know that the at a country level we have economy-wide MFA data for all of the countries, then we, we can make sure that this works. So that is one thing that we would definitely would like to focus on, which is, you know, downscaling, including data, uh, data from countries and all of that. Another thing is, well, there are many cities that already have an economy-wide MFA, so we'd like to see what can we do with them. And can we, uh, apart from our layering structure that we have now, so we have context, biophysical layers, infrastructures, and stocks and flows, these help you to open up the black box. So really geospatialize information, have concrete information of nodes of your system, but are not structured like the economy-wide MFA. So we'd like perhaps to either cross these two or mix these two, uh, but at least be able to also offer, you know, what do you do once you have very structured information uh, from economy-wide MFA studies? These exist in cities, there, there are a couple of them and we have them in our, uh, in our library, but we would like to also upload them in our system and see what can we do with it. Um, so this would be, you know, we have the countries, we have the, the economy-wide MFA cities, and we would like to, to merge this path in order to figure out um, what can we do with it, how can we make a Sankey, how can we make better visualizations, can we compare things as well between cities if they have used the same technique of um, collection or visualization. So that's something else. Perhaps in the future, there's going to be also a material balancing. So far, we haven't, uh, we don't have a material balancing um, element. Uh, so ideally, in the future, we might be able to to include that. Something else that we really would like to to have is um, a vertical integration. So what I mean with that, you remember I, I mentioned about countries and be able to downscale things. Well, we could also have something different, which is we already have plenty of data and data sets at the city level. We already have uploaded in our system many informations at a provincial level or a regional level. So in the case of Europe, that would be a NUTS 2 or NUTS 3 level. In the US, it would be the states uh, or counties, uh, you know, in uh, in Switzerland, it might be cantons or communes. So, you know, many countries have different levels. Uh, and you have data sets at all of these levels. What we would like to do is to better integrate vertically all of this information so that you know that your city belongs to one region and then that your region belongs to one country. And so once you have this, either be able to to visualize it uh, or be able to draw from data from higher upscales if that is the case. So this in intersection and integration, uh, 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 vertical uh, integration, we really help that um, this uh, could enable multi-scale also analysis and comparisons, uh, but also downscaling information to closest to your city when you don't have data. The last element that we would like to you know, start mingling with is uh, 
we call it an API, uh, API, but perhaps it's not concretely an API, but find a way to uh, collaborate with uh, Jupyter Notebooks. So for those who, who know what this is, is it's just an interactive way to, to code on Python. And the idea is how can we open the door to our data hub to researchers that do more you know, profound and more detailed analysis. So instead of you know, building all of the analytical tools in-house and you know, be able to do machine learning in-house and be able to do uh, multi, uh, you know, simple regressions or multiple regressions, uh, multivariate regressions within our own tool or PCAs or what, whatever, we would like to be able to outsource this information and make the, the link, the bridge between our data hub and you know, programming. Um, so we will be, this of course in the future will also help us to perhaps do some forecasting, some modeling. Once you have the information for today, perhaps you can forecast it for 2020, uh, sorry, 2030 uh, or 2040. So we'll, we'll be able to start, uh, you know, juggling a bit with this interface. So these are the, some of the things that we have thought. More specifically, there are three main things that we'll focus on. So the vertical integration, the MFA builder or the material flow analysis where you can really do a proper material flow analysis from collection to processing to visualization. Uh, that also is, you know, the, the Sankey diagram. In the integration, there's also a possibility to have downscaling. Um, and lastly, the API interface between, you know, our data hub and Jupyter notebooks. So these are the three main, uh, you know, construction sites that we have for 2021. What we will do is that we will have tasks for all of this. Uh, small tasks, big tasks, there will be programming tasks, there will be data collection tasks, there will be data processing tasks, there will be some coding um, in Jupyter tasks. So in case this is something relevant for you, uh, or if you have some time, we will be implementing all of these tasks in the Data Hub. So let me just show you here. Over here in our data hub, well, this is what you see in, in the very beginning, but we will be implementing many tasks. So if you go to Metabolism of Cities website, we have a, a, a place where we have all of the tasks that happen. And these tasks can be design, programming, um, information curation, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea is that we will be making these tasks and we'll make a link in this video in the description down below to tell you where you can find this information. So if you want, you can just jump in, re register. So over here, if you click, you can register in case that you don't have a profile yet and you can take on board one of these actions and please help us in, in doing so. If you have any questions as well, you can leave them there. If you want, you can go to the forum and then just you know discuss what are some of the futures you would like to see in the future. Um, you can also tell us um, your feedback once using uh, one of these tools. So we're very eager to, of course, we're doing this not only for us but for, for you, the, the user, the, the the citizen, the the policymaker, the, the perhaps the consultant that is uh, using our tools to to make a material flow analysis, the researcher the academic that is teaching this for, for students uh, or for a master student that is seeking for a master thesis and want to use our platform. So really encourage you to have a look what is there, what exists uh, already and how you can help us into building this data hub to, to the next level. So that's it for now and uh, we'll see you either in the forum or in the data hub. Thanks a lot and see you soon. Cheers.